guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So today I'm chatting about products that I would not repurchase or products that I regret buying. It's been a while since I filmed one of these videos. In case you guys didn't know, I have an entire playlist dedicated to products that I do not recommend, so I will link it in the description box below. But I talk about my favorites so often. You guys know that I love to rave about products that I love, so I think it is equally important to share products that I wouldn't recommend, things that didn't work for me with you guys as well. Of course, just because these products didn't work for me doesn't mean they won't work for you. So I'm sure a lot of you guys love some of these products and that's totally okay, but I just like to talk about things that didn't work for me and I wanna hear from you guys, so make sure you leave me a comment below letting me know which products you would not recommend, which ones you hate, which ones didn't work for you, because I feel like it's just fun to know and I wanna make sure I avoid those products as well. So I recently filmed a foundation declutter video, so if you guys wanna check it out, I will link it in the description box below. I didn't wanna to be too repetitive, but I did wanna include two products because these were like at the top of my would not repurchase list, regret buying list. They're just like two foundations that I did not like at all. So the first one is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. And I know so, so many people like this. And I know some of you guys have oily skin and you like it as well. But for me, it just, it does not look good on my skin. I have tried it so many times to like this. I have had it so many bad foundation days wearing this because I wanted to like it, but every single time I wear it, my face is just like an oily mess by the end of the day. So it did not work for me. I definitely will not be repurchasing this, and I don't know, I wanted to like it so badly, it just did not work for me. The other foundation is the Buxom Show Some Skin Weightless Foundation. So if you are a fan of like super light, next to nothing coverage, then this might be a good option for you, but when I'm wearing foundation, I want it to like even out my skin tone, cover my imperfections. I want it to do something. The coverage of this foundation was way too light. I feel like it was almost non-existent and it just did not look good on my skin. Again, my skin was very oily by the end of the day, so I definitely don't think it's for oily skin at all. Maybe if you have dry skin or combo skin and you just need a very light coverage foundation, it might work for you. But I don't know, I feel like at that point I would just go for like a BB cream or a CC cream. Honestly, I just don't think it's a great foundation. So these two are just not my favorite. Another face product that did not work for me at all was the Laura Geller Baked Radiance Cream Concealer. I have the shade Porcelain. So my first problem is that the shade Porcelain I think is the lightest shade and it is way too dark for me. So if you have very, very fair skin, like even more fair than my skin, this will definitely not match you. I feel like this is more of like a light to medium color. Second of all, it is way too hydrating. I mean, I know some people struggle with really dry under eyes. So if that's you, this might work for you, but I feel like it's just too creamy and too hydrating because it completely creases right under the eye. I have to say I really struggle with concealers creasing under my eyes because I do have under eye creases or wrinkles, so pretty much every concealer tends to crease on me, so I might not be the best judge for this concealer, but I feel like it's just way too hydrating to be a concealer. Like It has to have a little bit of stick to it to stay in place throughout the day, and this one is just insanely hydrating. I feel like it might make a good foundation, but I Obviously, like this isn't going to work as a foundation. It's just a little bit too creamy as a concealer in my opinion. Okay, so I have touched on this product in the past and some of you guys said you liked it and some of you thought I might have gotten a dud. So I might go back and retry it, but I was not a fan of the e.l.f. Intense Ink Eyeliner. I feel like it did not work for me at all and I'm not too picky when it comes to pen eyeliners. I love a lot of them. I love Physicians Formula. I like Stila, Essence. There are so many good options out there. This one just did not work for me. When I apply it to my eye, it skips across the eye. I feel like the applicator itself is too big and it just doesn't give you a really precise application. I just wasn't a huge fan of it. And you guys know that I love e.l.f. Cosmetics. I love so many of their products. I'm a huge fan of their liquid liner. I would definitely recommend that one over this one. But I don't know, a few of you said I got a dud. So I might retry it in the future. The only thing is I don't know if I'm a huge fan of the applicator. I feel like it's just a little bit too big to get a precise winged liner but I know it works for some people, so it might work for you, it just didn't work for me. So at one point, everybody on YouTube was raving about the Blink Mascara. It's really interesting, it's a tubing mascara, so it forms little tubes over your lashes, which kind of creeped me out for some reason, I just thought it was a weird way to describe a mascara. But I was definitely curious to try it out because so many people seem to like it. I think some of you guys left me comments saying you liked it as well. I got these both in my BoxyCharm in the past, so I tried them out and I, 
I hate to say it, but I think this is like the worst mascara combination I've ever tried, especially because I know it's probably on par with higher end prices. So I have the Black Lash Primer Jet Black Volume. So you're supposed to apply this one. And honestly, I tried this with the mascara and with different mascaras, and I felt like it was just kind of a dud. I didn't really find that it primed my eyelashes that well. I do have one from e.l.f. Cosmetics that I love, and it's like a few dollars and it works amazingly well. So if you're looking for a mascara primer, I definitely recommend the one from e.l.f. Cosmetics over this one. And then I tried it alongside of the Blink Mascara. So this is their Mascara Amplified. I don't know if they have a few different options on the website, but honestly, you guys, this mascara did nothing for my lashes. It's a little bit more of a dry formula, but it's kind of wet at the same time. It kind of is like a gel-ish formula. It's really interesting. So you apply it to your lashes and my lashes look pathetic. It didn't do anything for my lashes. It didn't make them look thick or voluminous or long. It just made it look like I had two lashes. So I am not a fan of this. Also, it wasn't really easy to remove. And when you do remove it, it comes off in like little tubes. So at first you think your eyelashes are falling out, but it's just the mascara. So that on top of it was just like enough to say, forget it. I don't want to use it again. I just didn't have a ton of luck with them. I feel like there are so many good drugstore mascaras and even higher end mascaras that work so much better than these. So I personally wouldn't waste my money. I know some people do like it. So if it works for you, let us know in the comments below. So I did touch on this product in an Ulta drugstore haul and review, but I wanted to mention it again in this video. So this is by Makeup Revolution, and I've tried a few of their products over the past couple of months, and I've really fallen in love with a few of them, and then there have been a few that don't work for me. Their Salvation Velvet Lip Lacquers are just no good in my opinion. Honestly, I haven't tried all of them, so I probably can't speak for the whole line, but I have the shade Vamp, which is a dark purple. These are very uncomfortable on the lips. I thought they might be a good drugstore liquid lip option, but honestly, they are so uncomfortable, and this one completely flaked off. It's tough because I had to use like a few applications to get a really opaque lip. It dried down, it was so uncomfortable, and then it kind of flaked off. It was streaky. It just wasn't a good lip product at all, so I would absolutely recommend staying away from this. There are just so many other good liquid lipsticks for affordable prices that I really think you don't really even need to try this one. So a lot of you guys told me that you are a huge fan of the Milani lip oils and I've only tried one. I tried the Moisture Lock Rose Hip Oil Infused Lip Treatment. That's like the official name and it just didn't work for me. I was really disappointed because a lot of you guys love them. It works for a lot of you but I feel like it didn't really do a whole lot for my lips. I won't say it made my lips feel more dry than they did in the first place which is what another product did that I'm going to mention but I don't feel like it really infused my lips with any hydration or moisture or anything like that. Don't know if the other ones do something different because I know they have a few different options. So if you guys do have a favorite, you'll have to let me know in the comments below. Also, you don't get a ton of product in this. Like if you take out the wand, you're left with almost no product and it will last you a little while because you don't need a ton of product when you're applying it. But at the same time for the price, I feel like it's just not worth it in my opinion. I'd rather reach for a different lip balm that actually works well and you actually get a good amount of product, if that makes sense. I will say I did like the large applicator. I feel like a lot of lip products come with a super small lip applicator, so you have to continuously apply it or go over your lips multiple times. And I don't have like really large lips, so for me to say that, I feel like other people would be able to relate even more. So I like that the applicator was so large because it just made applying the product so much easier. So I also touched on these lip oils in my Ulta drugstore haul and review, but I had to mention them again because you guys, I do not recommend these. Again, I'm a huge fan of Physicians Formula but their lip oil duo, I think it's called like their Argan Wear lip oil duo, was just absolutely not a good product at all. These actually made my lips feel more dry after I wore them, so it was like the complete opposite effect. My lips were not hydrated at all. I think they looked really beautiful on the lips, but they don't last because they're a lip oil, so they come right off as, you know, if you're talking, if you're eating, if you're drinking, they last for like half an hour at the very most. And then my lips were so dried out after it wore off. So I do not recommend these. I mean, if you're going to try one over the other, I would recommend Milani over these, but there has to be another solution out there. So if you guys have a good lip oil that you recommend, let us know in the comments below so we can check it out too. The last thing that I wanna mention is something that I picked up from the Dollar Tree a while ago, and I do have another Dollar Tree haul coming very soon, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But I did grab the Wet n Wild Vicious Varnish High Shine Lip Stains a while ago. These were part of the 
Fergie line. I think they were discontinued, so I don't know if it really matters at this point, but I wanted to throw them into this video. These are just a lousy product. I do not recommend them. I don't know if I got expired lip products or the product itself is just terrible, which is probably why it might have been discontinued, but the formula itself just doesn't work. It's like a thick gel that you apply to the lips and it goes on unevenly. It's patchy. It's streaky. It's just not cute at all. It bunches up in certain places, so it doesn't look good when you apply it. It does stain the lips, so I feel like if you had these and you want to make them work, maybe you can apply it and then wipe off the excess layer after a few minutes and you're left with a pretty stain, but unfortunately, it just was like a lousy lip product. I wasn't a huge fan. The packaging is nice. The applicator is nice as well, but the product itself was pretty terrible. Okay, guys, that is everything that I have for you guys today in this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Don't forget to leave me a comment below letting me know which products you would recommend avoiding because I really do want to hear from you. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.